So we think the main mechanism that is driving chronic coughing is a sensitization of the neuronal pathways controlling cough. And that might be in the airways or it might even be in the brain. We do get some clues about the underlying uh, chemicals and receptors involved from the kind of drugs that we're seeing are starting to help patients, particularly with refractory chronic cough. And those implicate things like the P2X3 receptor, which is the receptor that we find on sensory nerves that we know are in the airways, and also ATP, which is the main chemical that activates that receptor. Coughing itself is quite an exhausting experience, particularly if you cough hundreds of times in a day, which most people with chronic cough do. Um, but that amount of coughing really does cause some physical complications. So patients can cough so violently that they get pain in their chest or pain in their abdomen. They can develop hernias. They can cough so much that it makes them retch and vomit. Uh, in rare cases, patients can even crack ribs or even black out as a result of coughing. So it has quite an impact on their, on their quality of life. And so it's not surprising that there's quite a lot in the way of social and psychological impacts as well. Socially, people become almost agoraphobic. They don't like going out of the house, particularly during coronavirus infections, because people think they've got something that, that, that could be caught. Equally, they find it very difficult to be in quiet situations, such as a cinema, a theatre, a wedding, or a funeral, because they're worried they'll start coughing and disrupt the whole proceedings and, and have to go out. Um, they worry about going to dinner in case they start coughing and it makes them want to be sick. And so it, it really does impact on, on what they're able to do. Psychologically, they find it embarrassing. They can get angry and frustrated if they're having difficulty um, finding some treatment for their cough. And you see similar rates of anxiety and depression in chronic cough patients as you do with many other chronic conditions. So our biggest limitation at the moment for chronic cough is that we don't have licensed treatments for patients with unexplained or refractory chronic cough. And what I mean by that is that the general procedure when a patient presents with a chronic cough is to investigate them and try treatments for the common underlying causes, the main ones of which are asthma, nasal conditions such as rhinitis, sinusitis, and gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, and then we treat the patients for those underlying causes. But we're increasingly recognising there's a, a not insignificant group of patients whose cough just does not respond. And in those situations, we really need good anti-tussive treatments. And at the moment, all we have available is, is off-licence um, use of a few painkillers, which have not insignificant side effects. So in terms of diagnosing chronic cough, uh, simple tests are important. So don't forget to do a chest x-ray, make sure there's no abnormality there. Uh, lung function testing is also really useful for picking up patients who may have degree of asthma or COPD. We also find exhaled nitric oxide pretty helpful for patients where we suspect asthma, but, but the lung function is normal. Beyond that, it's very much a case of taking a careful history to see whether patients do have symptoms suggestive of any of those underlying causes I've already mentioned and then treat them appropriately and, and see if the cough will improve. In terms of monitoring to those treatments, we often just use a very simple 0 to 10 scale and tell patients, well, ask patients to tell us what their score is, where zero would be the cough has gone, 10 is the worst it's been, to keep some sort of a handle on just how they're, they're doing with medications that you try. So I would advise them, I've, I've already suggested, to carefully evaluate the patients for any obvious causes and also any of those three major associated conditions, asthma, nasal disease, reflux. Give them a supervised trial of treatment so that you're quite clear at the end of any treatment you've given whether they've improved or not. And I would have a low threshold if you're not getting anywhere with treating one or two potential underlying conditions of then referring patients on to somebody who's accustomed to dealing with more difficult chronic cough. Because a, 
it often becomes frustrating for both the patient and the physician. If you end up just start doing more and more tests and trying more and treatment, more and more treatments on the off chance that they might be helpful. Um, and actually, it may well be that this is a refractory or unexplained chronic cough that needs quite a different approach to controlling it.